Okay, I'm gonna let you take a little peek over my shoulder as I work with some of these, making some of these samples. What I'm doing is I'm dyeing um, some cotton batting to make handmade flowers, and I'm gonna be using the new Shivers Vibes. For this sample, which I've already got the this part dyed, I use the Vibes in Verdigris and in Hermit the Frog to kind of make a blended effect. And on this purple, I've used two other colors here, the Razzle Dazzleberry and Grape Escape. To um, get this look, I've just cut some leftover pieces of cotton batting. This is a white batting that just left over from another project. And I'm just first going to wet the batting just with a, some plain water just to um, help make everything blend together and uh, to get the dyes to really work. The vibes are just so beautiful. I'm so excited about this new product that Shimmers has developed. The, um, the colors are just beautiful, rich jewel tones and uh, not only work with paper but with fabric because you know I like to use fabric a lot on my projects. So um, I'm just going to take, I want some yellow to make some little centers on my flowers. So this yellow is called Sunset Strip. I'm just going to roll the bottle in my hands to mix the color, to mix all the, the um, uh, color that set, settles into the bottom, all the um, mica, or, or, and I'm just going to start lightly misting this, and you can see how quickly you get so much saturation of color. It's amazing. And the other, I'm going to do some, some, I want some kind of orange on it, so I'm going to take this red, it's called Ready or Not, and I'm going to go ahead and put the red down first. I love that color, so rich. And not to waste any, I'm just going to kind of blend it around and incorporate it into the action, into the batting all the way. So I'm just going to kind of keep working it. And on the this one, I'm going to add a little bit of this gold. It's called Rolling in the Hay. It has some copper in it that's going to, I think, really make this stand out. So I'm going to keep adding a little more color. And I'm also going to work... You can see it's seeped on through with it being wet, so I'm just going to continue to work the color, pick up any excess that's on the background, I think a little more of this um, sunset strip. Sorry, I'm not totally familiar with the color names, which are so cute, since these are all, all new, but this all just lets dry, and uh, then I can make it some kind of felted look flowers. This color, I want to add, um, I really like it, so I think maybe I'll add more pink with this. And then maybe just a little bit of the yellow. This is the color called um, Razzle, Razzle Dazzle Berry. And I'm going to add some of that. It's a really beautiful fuchsia. Because I kind of was trying to think of making a coral. And I already have the purple. So then I'm going to add a little more of the sunset over this. I really like that. Now I'm going to just pick up the rest of the color. So none of, it, none of it's wasted. And um, just kind of make a tie-dye blended look just by kind of mushing it together. And my fingers, if you'll notice, everything's going to wash right off with water. No staining. I'm, my nails aren't ruined and uh, really, really nice. I, I love that part about it because I am a messy crafter and uh, that's really wonderful for me. These pieces are actually almost dry. I don't know if you can see, but the shimmer on these is just unbelievable. The vibes have so much color. Let's see if I can get in a little closer. They are just beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and let this all dry, and then I'm going to come back and give you a couple tips on making some flowers, uh, maybe some rolled roses or little daisy type flowers, a kind of a needle felted look. So I think this is going to end up really pretty, and uh, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I want to show you a couple of ideas I had for making some flowers with the dyed um, batting, the cotton batting that I was using in the earlier segment. One is a simple flower, which is really kind of popular right now. Um, usually I've seen it made with paper. Uh, just to cut, this is a loose circle that I cut. Um, then I just cut a spiral shape all the way into the center. And then I'm just going to wrap it back up on itself. And it's going to make like a little rosette. When you make it with paper, usually you wrap it pretty tightly, then it'll kind of unwind. But one nice thing about batting is it kind of sticks back on itself, so you really don't have to do much with it. I think I want that a little bit tighter there. But whenever I get it like I, like I would want it to be, I would just put a little dab of glue down on a piece of paper and glue it down. I recommend um, Fabric Tack permanent adhesive for any kind of fabric gluing because it's it sticks really quickly and um, dries easily and you're not going to have a lot of stiffness in your project. So I would just have a little piece of paper that I would just 
glue this down onto. I, I want to rewrap this a little bit and change the center, so I'll do that in a moment. Another idea is to make a flower like this one with the um, gathered strip with a little button in the middle. And then I simply will cut a little strip of, ba of the batting and I just kind of give a little scalloped edge. And I would just run a quick running stitch along the bottom edge. Uh, I've got just a, I have black thread here just so you can see it. But I'm just going to really loosely just stitch along the bottom edge. Then I would gather it up and sew a button into the center. And that makes a very easy and cute little posy looking flower. After I gather it up, I always just kind of pull the ends together. This could also make a little center for a flower. Or this might actually be a little more of a bud, I'm thinking, after seeing it. So I would maybe wrap it up and just stitch through the base a couple of times to hold everything in place. And you can see the really cute little bud shape that's emerging. I normally would not use black thread, like I said, because I don't want the thread, to, the stitching to show. So just a just a cream thread probably wouldn't show much on this. The black is going to stand out, but I'll make sure I poke this bottom unfinished edge in under my flower cluster. So I really like that little bud. I think that's really cute. And then I could also stitch a quick green leaf onto that while I'm working. So I've got my green. I just always I freehand cut pretty much all these type of things. I'm just going to cut a leaf shape. This one I want to be kind of a to be wider at the bottom. I'm planning on wrapping the back side of the bud. So then I'll just take it over here to the bud and wrap it. And I'll just go ahead and stitch that down while I've got the needle and thread out. You might want to use a thimble because it does get a little thick on these layers. And after you knot that off, you've got a really cute little bud that's kind of um, like a rosebud with the leaf on the back side. Also, you could make your own strips of rip rack. This just happens to be a piece that was left over after I cut some scallop strips off. Um, you could wind up a little rosette. Um, that's just by taking a base like I did before and a, a piece and just rolling it in the center, gluing as you go. You could sew pearls for embellishments into the middle. You could use lace. Um, really, the options are endless. Um, here's this tiny rosette bud I made. This is just made with little strips that I kind of tied together and knotted up just to make this would be a good little center. So this just gives you a few really basic ideas of what you could do with this. This also would look like um, just a really nice texture to put in as a layer underneath for a soft look onto your page. Um, so yeah, I hope that gives you a few ideas and I will have some pictures of the finished layout when I'm done, when I finish all the flowers and get everything finished. But um, I also have used the vibes on my background a little bit. Let me show you where I did that. Um, here on this, I've done some of the purple. And then the background I painted first with gesso, just a dry brush of gesso. Then I went along the edge and sprayed. This is with the Breaking Dawn. Uh, just adds a kind of a soft gray. Um, normally it's blacker, but on top of the pure white, it's going to look a little more gray. And then I took a little bit of the coal shimmers, the actual paint, and just dabbed it along the edges to give just a little stronger line. So there you have it, a little bit of a few ways to add some of the new vibes uh, using batting and also just onto your layout to kind of make everything blend together. Thanks!